Hey there, in this one, we are gonna be implementing a third-party package in React called React YouTube. So what this means is we're just gonna install this package and show you a few different things that you can do. React has so many really good ones, and this is one that I found pretty useful. So let's go ahead and implement it. Of course, it's on the NPM website of React-YouTube, and like many third-party packages, you can just search for something. In my case, it would be React and YouTube. Search for that on Google and you'll find something like this. And I usually go off of these downloads. In many cases, weekly downloads are, are a pretty good indication of how much this thing is being used and therefore how good this thing might actually be. Well, and the other part of this is pretty cool is there's actually a GitHub repo, so the code itself is open source. So even if it's not that great of a project um, or a component for your purposes, you can still go in there and learn about their code, as you may already know. Okay, so I'm gonna install this into my project pretty easily just by doing, making sure I'm in where package.json is. And this is already a React app also. So npm install and it's react-youtube and we'll do dash dash save. Okay, so that's gonna run. While that's running, I'm gonna grab a YouTube link. So I've got my try React.js YouTube tutorial. I'm just gonna go ahead and grab this link first, and I'm gonna bring it into some code here. So that's the actual share link. I'm also gonna grab the link in the URL without the list, right? So everything V equals to, and I'm gonna also grab that. Okay, and what we should see here are these two things. That I believe is gonna be our video ID. So we're gonna ignore the list portion, but you know, perhaps we will be able to embed that as well. So I'll just go ahead and leave that in as a comment also. Okay, so going back into the package itself, we see this is how you actually go about using it. And it even gives you a nice little example. Let's go off of their example. I'm gonna import YouTube React and then I'm gonna just copy everything in the bottom of this, just like that. Okay, so a couple things that I don't recommend that you do. Number one, putting a method below render. I don't actually think that's a good idea. I think render should be the last one, just because it's a little bit easier to read. And then this on ready method, notice that there's an event that's being passed in here. Um, I would rather be more explicit with this. So I'll say video on ready and change it to that. And there you go. Okay, so, so this is actually showing generally an example of this YouTube. Um, and we have a video ID here. Notice it says video ID, so that's probably very explicit. Um, so for me, what I'm gonna do is instead of actually writing the video ID here, I'm gonna have this component allow this to render for me. So something you'll do from time to time is actually have one component that renders another one, right? So in my case, I'm doing this React YouTube example component, um, but I might use this throughout my project and I want a consistent look and feel. That is, you know, my YouTube videos, I want them to all look the same throughout my entire site. So this is a good example of a time when I can actually use inside of, inside of um, my render function here. I'm gonna go ahead and grab the video ID and it's going to use const video ID and it's gonna be equal to this.props, right? So I'm actually gonna pass the video ID as a property method and we'll just pass in here the actual video ID we end up using. Um, these options, I'll just leave them as is, but then we also have this video ready method. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and say console log what event dot target is, okay? And the cool thing too is we can look at the documentation that they have of several different methods that are actually in here. So on play, um, state change, playback rate change, playback quality change, uh, those are all sorts of functions that you can have a callback method actually working in there. So like this is a callback method, right? And that's gonna actually call that and run through with it, which is great. Okay, cool. So now I've got video ID of a prop. Let's actually bring this into my app.js. I'm going to comment out some of our other code that we've been using and I'll just import React G, um, YouTube example from dot slash um, third party and react YouTube example. And then of course we come in here and put in our video ID and we set that equal to something 
In my case, it's just gonna be this video ID. Cool. So again, this is about a uniform rendering of it. I don't have to do it this way. You could do it where it's rendering out like their example. Uh, but I like having that shortcut to make sure everything's consistent and that I have the same methods that are gonna be handling all sorts of things. Okay, so I, I'm gonna go ahead and save that and let's, let's go ahead and run our app again. So npm run start. Notice that I have the package installed. Everything looks good. Um, there might be some other things that every once in a while it will tell you to install, but let's just go ahead and try it out and see if there's any errors or any issues that we have running this. Um, my React app is still holding some of the old code there. And it looks like I have a little spelling error on my import on app.js. This should say third party. There we go. And we're missing a little piece as well. And that's just a little export default. And we want to export that default class. Make sure you always remember to do that. It nice. It, it's really good about warning you too. Okay, cool. So um, looks like my video has loaded up, right? And perhaps I have all of these methods that I can call on it, right? So um, there was a default method that was built in and that was pause video, event target pause video. And I console logged the event target to see what different methods I might have on there. Uh, notice we've got play video, play video at. So what if I try the play video at one? I'll just do play video at, and let's do, I don't know, 50, representing like, you know, 50 seconds. Okay, refresh in here, and it plays the video, it doesn't play it at the right time, so perhaps that method is incorrect. So what would I do to go about actually figuring this out? Well, I would grab this, double check to make sure I spelled everything correctly, right, by going back in here, and it says play video at, play video at, looks like that's the right actual call for it. So what I'll do next is, I'll say react YouTube, play video at, and now it takes me to the YouTube player API. And we'll look it up, see what the actual call is. And it gives me an index number. So this is actually related to the playlist, not related to time. So this actually gives me all of the YouTube iframe player API stuff. And the reason I'm showing you this is to see how you can go down the rabbit hole of really kind of reverse engineering how some of these things are set up. So if I actually wanted a playback time, what we would end up doing is, let's say, let's just do a quick search for time. Well, oh, check this out. We've got get current time. So um, on ready is one of them. I will go back to the on, uh, the on time. So let's go ahead and do on play. Let's make a new one called for, specifically for on play. And we'll just say video on play video on play. Okay, and this dot video on play. And then what I want to go is back into that and get the actual video players current time. So the video player is event dot target. I know that from what I just rendered. So if I console log event dot target dot get current time, or more specifically, just by saying const um, video player, or rather just player. That way it fits with the API documentation a little bit better. We save that and there we go. So let's try that out. Um, it should render right away. And as soon as it plays, it's gonna tell me what time it was, right? So if I come here, press play, it tells me what time. That's pretty cool. So get current time is there. Um, we can use get player state. There's a lot of different things that we could go about doing this. Uh, get state change. Get state change sounds something like if the video is playing, if it's not, let's see what that does. We're gonna come back in here, get state change. And again, video state change event. And this time I'm just gonna go ahead and console log the event, see what happens with the actual event itself. So this dot, state change, there we go, try it again, refresh, 
and we've got target. So again, it's doing our actual target. So it's giving us the actual player. So let's try that same thing with the current time. This time I'm gonna just console, leave the console log off on video and play and see if state change does anything for us. Okay, so I play it and it seems like every time I do something on this video, pause, play, pause, play, it will actually show me what's going on inside of that video. Pretty awesome. Cool, so let's see if we can explore a few other things. And the, the one for time, so I'm gonna go ahead and look up time again. So we've got get duration and set timeout. No, 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 no. Okay, so I want it to actually load up at a specific time. So maybe let's go ahead and do start. Oh, it looks like maybe we have seek two. How about we try seek two? That looks like pretty promising. So instead of on ready event play video at, we'll do event and event target. Well, event target, if we remember, is actually the player. So player dot seek two. And what number? We said 50 seconds before, we try that. And let's go back in. As soon as it's ready, it jumps in 50 seconds ahead. And again, we're still getting all of those events. Um, and I think the event should probably show us a few other things. So if I change the quality, let's change it to 1080. Yeah, so it's not actually logging that event. Oh, yeah, well, because of the current time. Um, so it's possible that there's other event sort of triggers that may happen with this state, but that's just about playing around with it. And then also going into this API, the YouTube iframe player API, and literally just looking at the various functions that we have and just keep in mind that when you associate them, we've got event.target, that's gonna be your player, that's what you're gonna be able to work with. Um, so one of the things is that you might end up doing is component, or um, component, let's change this to component will unmount. So the component's leaving, you're actually exiting out of this component. Perhaps video player on ready, we say this dot set state and we set a state for the player object to being the player. And then that way, before it unmounts, we can say let player object equals to this dot state or rather const. And we can actually console log the current time. So where'd they leave off, right? So this would be if you were wanting to make sure that when they leave this page, you have a record of where they stopped watching on your actual page. I mean, this is what you could send to the back end or something like that. Um, this is something that I would still consider testing in your own sort of test, but um, that's it. That's how to actually use bits and pieces of the React YouTube third-party package, as well as the YouTube API. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. If you wanna see some other third-party components, let me know as well. For everybody else, make sure that you subscribe to get everything and we will see you next time.